Hershey Bears. And that's how it ended. The Hershey Bears are the Calder Cup champions. The Coachella Valley Firebirds coming up one goal short in overtime. We have live team coverage for you. Hello, I'm John White. Karen Devine was at Acrisure tonight cheering on the Firebirds. News Channel 3's Samantha Lamibo spent time with fans tonight. She's standing by at Acrisure coming up. And also sports director Blake Arthur and sports reporter Bailey Ardondo are out there. And let's start with them. And boys, guys, the Firebirds had some great chances in that overtime period. Yeah, John, that's exactly right. Blake Arthur alongside Bailey Arredondo. Bailey, we just witnessed a heck of a series, a heck of a game seven, obviously not ending the way the Firebirds wanted, ending in disappointment, losing 3-2 the final in overtime. But what an incredible season for this team. First ever season, they make it all the way to the finals. Lots of highs. Ultimately, it ends on a low. I thought the visuals after the game spoke volumes because not one Firebird fan left at the beginning, still cheering on their team. It's tough sometimes to be a fan. Sports don't always go your way, but I think collectively the bigger picture stood out tonight. Fans, uh, to your point, we're chanting Joey, Joey at the end of the game for goaltender Joey Decor, who uh, uh, was solid all season. In fact, this whole team was so talented, so deep, so skilled. The Hershey Bears just kind of grinded their way into this game. Uh, we were talking earlier, Hershey struggled in this building, but they kind of sustained some punches, hung in there, and they find a way to win. Everything goes out the door in a game seven. It just comes down to who can execute. The Firebirds had 47 shots on yeah. goal tonight. <laughs> That's a lot to only have two goals. Firebird fans, we're not used to the Firebirds only scoring two goals here at home. A tough moment, but a moment hopefully they can build from, learn from, come back next season even more fired up. Hunter Shepard, the Bears goaltender, named MVP of the Calder Cup Finals, and rightfully so. He kept them in this game, and like you're saying, those chances the Firebirds have, usually that's goal five, goal six, maybe goal seven. I mean, this team is so explosive offensively, just Hunter Shepard was a wall back there tonight. Absolutely, and this is a collective team that never quit at all. The Firebirds, they were the new flavor in town. Everyone talked about the big, bad yeah. West Coast. Here's the beast from the East. They've won 11, now 12 Calder Cups for a reason, Blake. And they only hang Calder Cup banners in Hershey, so congratulations to the Bears. You can't take anything away from them, or the Firebirds, really. I mean, you hate to see any team lose right. in this sort of series. In a Game 7, it was that good of a hockey game. Very tense, and uh, we obviously just had the pleasure of watching it, pleasure of covering this team all year. And be sure to stay with us, too, because we're still waiting for the Firebirds to hit the press conference room as well. Very curious to see head coach Dan Bilesma thoughts. He's been on a lot of the winning side. Yeah. Curious to see what he says on the losing side of this one. Can't imagine that he is nothing but proud of this team, but Absolutely. obviously in defeat it does hurt, so be sure to stay with us for that. Uh, as you can see, one last look here. We'll give you it. Well, they're starting to clear out, but they're celebrating with the Calder Cup are the Hershey Bears. Some beverages have found some hands of some players and personnel and, and everybody, so... Uh, Disappointing season for the Firebirds. Uh, disappointing way to end the season, I should right. say, for the Firebirds. Nothing to hang their heads about. Hey, they're not going anywhere. After sure Arena, still here. We'll be here next year. They'll be back, and we'll be back in this newscast, so be sure to stay with us right here on KESQ News Channel 3. For Bailey, I'm Blake. Back to you in the studio, John. Guys, I want to get your take on this. Grant Fuhr talked about it during the broadcast. These guys played more hockey than any other team yeah. in the AHL with so many of those series going to the final game, also overtimes. Did that catch up with them finally? You know, John, I think it's a great question, and I don't think the players or head coach Dan Bilesma will ever admit that. No way. But, I mean, when you play 98 games, 72 in the regular season, tonight was playoff game number 26, you have to think fatigue is a factor, especially in a hockey and overtime. The longer it goes, these guys were exhausted. Well, hockey is a different sport. Remember, these are guys on ice, hitting yeah. each other, battling, banging bodies. This isn't golf or tennis or non-contact sport. This is real deal, 98 games. That's a lot of games. I don't care what sport you're playing. Yeah, I mean, here we are in June, June 21st. Oh. This is summertime, first day of summer is the last right. day of the the hockey season. So, yeah, John, I think that's a good point that you make. And, and I don't ever want to discount the team because these are professional athletes, and I think they're built for that moment. But, yes, they're also human beings, and I think fatigue was definitely a factor physically, but also, and maybe more importantly, mentally, because uh, that is quite the grind on the team, and uh, unfortunately they came up short tonight. And what's cool is we know we have some of Seattle Kraken's players for next year who were playing all the season right here. So that's going to be great. We'll check back in with you guys in just a little bit, hopefully maybe for some of that post game.
Well, the Firebirds almost delivering a championship in their first very magical season. News Channel 3 has been there every step of the way this year as the team's official broadcast partner. Let's take a look back. From the birth of the birds, the story started back in 2019 when the American Hockey League awarded its 32nd franchise to the NHL Seattle Kraken and the Oakview Group. These are some of the first renderings we brought you back in 2019 of what this arena was going to look like. Now you recall the arena was initially set to be built in Palm Springs. Uh, it was moved in 2020 to Burger Foundation land north of Interstate 10 next to Classic Club. That was kind of at the beginning of the pandemic. One, two, three. Hey. Yeah, we were there when there was nothing there. The next year, 2021, we brought you the groundbreaking at that location that became Acrisure Arena. We also learned that the team would be called the Firebirds. Last year, the pace picked up in January of 22. We got our first look at the team's uniforms and logo. Then in October, KESQ flew up to Seattle. So here in Seattle, we're on the ice at the Kraken Community Iceplex, home of the Seattle Kraken, but it was home to the Coachella Valley Firebirds today in their first ever home game. October did bring the start of the season and 22 games on the road for the Birds. They were homeless at the beginning until Acrisure Arena was finished. Then in December came that historic home opener. Firebirds fans, it's the inaugural season and we are ready to create some new traditions. And they won that first game over the Tucson Roadrunners. The final score was 4-3. to three. From there, the season took off. The team playing 98 games over the regular and postseason, ending the regular season in April with the second-best record in the AHL. And now we know the postseason ended with the Coachella Valley Firebirds going all the way to the end, coming up just one goal short. To the Hershey Bears. Okay, right now let's head out to News Channel 3's Samantha Lemiebaugh. She's been covering fan reaction, not just for this game, but all through the regular and postseason. She's been out there at a number of the games, and Samantha, boy, they were really ready to bring home that cup tonight. They were, and I think everyone was, John. I do want to say you were making me nostalgic talking about what we've seen throughout this season. My first time stepping here, I was in a hard hat while the construction was going, and it's crazy to see how far they've come. It wasn't quite the fairy tale ending that we all hoped or expected it to be. But speaking with fans, their attitude is there's always next year, and they're proud to see what has happened with the Coachella Valley Firebirds, including Geronimo and Mary. They are diehard fans that have been here all throughout the season. What are you most proud about for the team? You know, it, it changed the whole atmosphere and the dynamics here. Everybody's so excited. It, they needed something like this, and it really brought the whole valley together. I mean, everybody's excited. It, you know, everybody keeps saying, we don't have hockey here, but it's something that really brought everything out, and, and, and people, the community got together. Oh. We're behind the team 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with what he's saying. It's been just amazing how everyone here has been just just it's like they've become like a family or something every time we come out and watch the game everyone we're sitting next to is just really just supportive of, of the team and just everyone's just excited to be here and it's just it's just been an amazing run the team's just played so amazingly well I mean we just overjoyed that they made it this far in their inaugural year so I mean, yeah, you're right. There is next year. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I'm not disappointed at all. I mean, I'm I'm happy that they made it this far in their first year. Absolutely. And I love that that's your attitude. I mean, it's in the name. Coachella Valley Firebirds are not after one city. It is encompassing yeah. the entire community. What was it like being a fan in this historic inaugural season? Oh, my God. I can't, I'm speechless over it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even explain. It's just been just amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just, it, it, it. Brought a whole new light to the valley. I mean, it just, I wasn't a hockey fan, but when this started and I just came here and it just, it, the energy and the people and, and the community, it was just so, they were on top of it. And together, we were like, we're here. We're supporting the team. We're here 100%. Absolutely. And that support that you guys had and that thousands of people had, I mean, John, I'm with them. I wasn't a hockey fan until I came here and saw what this community could do just to push this team through a historic season. Yes, we lost, but there's always next year, and this is just the beginning. We'll have more coverage throughout the show. Live from Acrisure Arena, Samantha Mebao, News Channel 3. That's right, Samantha. I feel like they built the arena, but they also had to build the fan base. They had to educate the fan base. They had to say, hey, hockey's cool, and that is all happening 
happened over the last year. Like he said, someone who never watched hockey before, now he's a big fan. Yeah, John, it's crazy because we are all talking about it. We didn't really expect it to go this far, and this fan base didn't take long to build. I mean, we saw this support all the way from the beginning. Yes, every single game, this arena got more and more fans, but the energy, I mean, that was there, and like people have said, it is, it's cliche, but it's something that we needed. They needed something to unite the community. I've met people who've been fans since they were children to people who were never fans. But because of this team, it, it just brought everyone together. And it was amazing to see. And yes, it's sad to say goodbye to this season. But if anything, it's more exciting to see what they'll bring next season. Hey, as soon as we get through the summer, there's going to be more hockey. Starts in October. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Well, after tonight, what's next for these Firebirds? A well-earned vacation. That's priority number one, I think. The team will take several weeks off before players will return to the Valley for training camp. Training camp for the Kraken usually happens sometime in September. We will look forward to hosting our own training camp here at Akershire Arena for the first time. We didn't have the arena last year. We held it in Seattle. So we'll be able to hold our own training camp in early October. <laughs> The next season will begin in early to mid-October with preseason games. Next season's schedule will be announced in about a month.